Welcome to Planet Microcap 2024. Let's go ahead and give a round of applause to our next presenter, Brian Murphy from Nano Vibronics. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for being here and for your interest in Nano Vibronics. Uh, hopefully everybody walked away and took some money out of the casino last night. Uh, my time at the blackjack table kind of reminded me of the journey with nanobiobronics. Uh, kind of took a beating early on and then had a massive comeback. So um, it uh, turned out well. So a little bit about the company. Uh, we're, a nanobibron we're nanobibronics uh, listed on NASDAQ, uh, symbol is NAOV. Uh, and by the way, currently trading at under cash. So great opportunity to get in. Uh, we utilize one platform technology and incorporate it into multiple products. Uh, the platform technology is called Surface Acoustic Wave. Basically, what that is, is it's low level, low frequency ultrasound. Um, different mechanisms of action for different indications, and I'll go through that in a minute. So we design, develop, commercialize, manufacture uh, products, uh, primarily in Israel, uh, moving the manufacturing into the United States uh, this year. Uh, the indications for use, uh, we have a pain product, uh, a urology product that uh, uh, I think you'll be very impressed by. Uh, these products do something that nothing else does on the market. And I'll explain that in a minute. So we employ uh, a small disposable transducer that transmits low frequency, low intensity ultrasound acoustic waves. Um, everybody's pretty familiar with uh, ultrasound at a clinic, very high energy, uh, but this actually has the exact same mechanisms of action, but it's over a sustained period of time. Uh, the devices uh, we address a number of clinical indications um, from pain, uh, treatment of non-healing wounds, and our flagship product, uh, the Euroshield, which you see on the right, uh, prevents catheter-associated UTI, which is a huge uh, issue, not only in the United States, but worldwide. Um, the products are intended really to be used at home and uh, as everybody knows who follows healthcare, the uh, priority right now is to shift into a lower cost care setting, which ultimately will be the home. So a little bit about ultrasound and Euroshield. Um, Euroshield is a product that clips onto the external portion of the catheter and it sends an ultrasonic wave down the catheter. It's undetected by the patient. Uh, best way for me to explain it is it is kind of like it creates like a trampoline effect. As the surface acoustic wave or the ultrasound wave travels down the catheter, it, uh, the trampoline effect prevents the colonization, the docking of the bacteria onto the catheter. Urinary tract infection is really the result of a cascade of issues that, that occur while the catheter is uh, indwelling. And the first event of that cascade is the docking of, uh, of bacteria onto the catheter. Multiple other um, uh, mechanisms of action for the Euroshield, it uh, prevents pain. Um, having a urinary catheter or an indwelling catheter uh, creates pain when it's uh, extracted. Uh, what ultrasound does and what the Euroshield does is it creates somewhat of a, an ultrasonic envelope around the catheter. And uh, if you don't um, inflame the urethra, you don't have the pain uh, associated with urinary catheters. It um, prevents pain, uh, prevents docking of bacteria onto the catheter. Uh, also, it, uh, it breaks up biofilm. 
So one of the cascades of events is that it will, the docking of the bacteria onto the catheter will eventually create a biofilm. A biofilm is nothing more than a colony of bacteria that uh, has somewhat of a, a, a Teflon effect, uh, won't allow the, the antibiotic to penetrate and become effective. As a result, another very important um, mechanism of action is it uh, helps um, uh, a bacteria antibiotic uh, to become more effective. If you've got a colony and you've got a, a, a Teflon coating to the colony, a biofilm, and you're, you prevent that, you've got free floating bacteria and therefore the antibiotic becomes more effective in targeting the bacteria. So a little bit about the scope of the problem. 40% of all hospital acquired infections are due to catheter associated UTI. Um, to look at this in a matter of time, the longer the catheter is in, the higher the, the incidence of urinary tract infection. So if you look at all the studies, and there's been multiple studies done on this, uh, it averages out at about, the midpoint is about four. So if you've got, an in, and this is incremental increase in percent of people who will get uh, a urinary tract infection due to a catheter. So if you've got a catheter in for 10 days, there's a 40% chance that you're gonna contract a urinary tract infection. And um, the uh, biofilms are really the, the key to this whole thing and preventing a biofilm is really what creates uh, the effectiveness of this product. So the impact on cost, um, I mean, beyond cost, uh, I have a, a, a personal attachment to this device. My mother died of uh, catheter associated urinary tract infection about five years ago. But um, so some of the, the details associated with cost effectiveness, um, for instance, a length of stay of 4.8 days, an increase of 4.8 days in a hospital. Um, I can tell you from personal experience that yes, that occurred, but the readmitting of a patient with a, 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 a urinary tract infection occurs more than what is in this analysis. Uh, there are numbers all over the board, but uh, the savings or the cost to treat a urinary tract infection in a hospital is $9,900. I've seen numbers as high as 20000 but um, that's the midpoint right there. So it is, it's a huge problem in the medical community. We have uh, multiple studies that uh, have been completed. Uh, our biggest study to date was a study in nursing homes out of uh, Buffalo, New York, 55 patients. And basically the result was that in 30 days, 29% of the control had contracted a urinary, catheter associated urinary tract infection and zero on the, uh, the Euroshield. Now, that was not enough to get us through the FDA. Uh, we have multiple studies and white papers that uh, have proven its effectiveness around all of its mechanisms of action, pain, um, uh, biofilm uh, prevention, and docking of, of uh, and colonization of, of bacteria. But we're currently approved uh, for marketing uh, of the Euroshield through what's called enforcement discretion. Now this happened uh, back when COVID began. I submitted under uh, uh, for an EUA application and we didn't fit all the boxes. So they felt that it was important enough to have this product on the market and they approved us through what's called enforcement discretion. Um, and that carries forward to today. We currently have uh, the University of Michigan contracted to do a study for us. Our principal investigator is uh, a renowned researcher uh, by the name of uh, Lona Modi. And uh, that will be 306 patients uh, to be enrolled. 
the um, the study is what is referred to as a patient reported outcome study, which uh, has multiple points: so reduction in pain, reduction in catheter blockage, quality of life, antibiotic usage, and the clinical outcomes: uh, catheter incident or cauti incidence and bacterial colonization on the catheter. So another one of our products, and and right now the majority of our revenue is coming from the pain shield. The pain shield is differentiated by its mechanism of action and really what the intended use is and, and the intended clinical result is. You've got a lot of bad bills on the market you know, Advil, Tylenol, uh, uh, aspirin, and uh, they treat the symptom of pain. The one thing to remember here is that because of its ultrasound mechanism, uh, the intent is really to cure what's causing the pain rather than to just treat the symptom of pain. Very different from the rest of the way the rest of the market looks at this. We were the first uh, uh, low-level, low-frequency ultrasound, and we're still the only true low-level, low-frequency ultrasound on the market today. So um, rather than to go through all of these, if you think about it in terms of soft tissue repair, really what we're doing is subdermally, uh, we are treating soft tissue. And we do this, this through a number of mechanisms. And again, this is a proven therapy. It's, uh, we have multiple studies, but ultrasound, it does the exact same thing as ultrasound, but over a period of time. It's wearable ultrasound where currently in the clinic, you can have ultrasound, but you can only have it for about 10 minutes because it actually will do damage to the tissue. We are at a low enough frequency where our treatment area is about 20 centimeters in diameter and four centimeters deep. Um, the ultrasound uh, that we employ is really intended to be soft tissue repair through a number of different mechanisms. It increases uh, oxygenation, blood flow, uh, a reduction in inflammation, and encourages uh, um, uh, the, uh, the cell growth and um, vascular network. So uh, it is extremely effective. A little bit about the market, uh, chronic pain. Um, I, I'm sure that many people in here deal with chronic pain. I know I do, and I can't, I can't live without this. Um, but it affects 21% of all uh, U.S. adults. Uh, the uh, opioid crisis is, uh, even though it's out of the news, it's still alive and well. And um, in a couple of different markets that we deal in, it uh, uh, our growth there has been the direct result of trying to get away from opioid use. So um, a little bit about the difference between conventional ultrasound and the uh, surface acoustic wave that's employed through pain shield. Um, the depth of clinic-based ultrasound, it'll travel very deep into the body. When it's employed over bone, uh, the bone radiates the, the ultrasound and can actually burn the tissue. So we have a wave that actually hits the, the tissue and then spreads vertically or horizontally. So um, the uh, clinic-based ultrasound uses gel. It's a contact gel in order to radiate the, uh, the ultrasound and, and actually get it into the body. We do not use any gel. Uh, it's stationary. And ours happens to be portable, utilized uh, uh, at home, and you 
put it in your pocket and uh, just wear it all day. Um, the level of uh, ultrasound, the power, the difference is somewhere between about one megahertz and three megahertz, maybe sometimes as high as five megahertz. We are at 90 kilohertz. So about one tenth of the lowest level of uh, ultrasound in a clinic. So it is a slow release or wearable ultrasound. It treats a wide surface instead of a narrow, a narrow, very focused approach of a clinical ultrasound. Uh, wearable um, uh, treatment in, in, in very difficult areas. And uh, there are no side effects, which uh, obviously that, that's a huge impact uh, and a motivating factor in the VA. So a little bit about uh, where we've been. Um, this has been uh, uh, kind of the remake of a, of a company. We've been on NASDAQ for about five years. And, uh, and again, for those of you who walked in late, we're trading at the low cash right now. Uh, important factor. Uh, Q4 of 2023, we did 1,177,000. In Q4 of 2022, 107,000. Uh, the next is is actually a misprint. It's uh, 2 million 183 versus 752 for the year, year over year. Shareholder equity of about four million dollars, cash on hand, uh, a little over three million, and inventory uh, we're we're set for pretty much about a year. So we've moved out of China moved into Singapore, we've moved out of Singapore, and uh, uh, we now do disposable manufacturing just in, uh, in Israel. Some of the uh, contributing factors that, uh, that were the, uh, that resulted in the growth. On the Euroshield side, uh, we did get reimbursement through NHS. Uh, the reimbursement is uh, a limited reimbursement but we're working, it, it's a reimbursement for the disposable and not for the device itself. We're working toward full reimbursement uh, through NHS. Um, as a result, the international revenues have grown. Uh, we signed an agreement to evaluate the product with uh, a urinary pharmaceutical company called Apagitha, Apagifa uh, out of Germany. And their evaluation was, was uh, done through three doctors, uh, one of which happened to do one of our early studies. And uh, all the evaluations went well. We're waiting to hear what their decision is. But that could be our answer for all of Europe and definitely one of our upsides. Uh, the VA, um, VA has been a little bit uh, elusive uh, for Euroshield. Um, we do have a, a distributor that's about ready to come on board. We expect that to happen this month and, uh, and get broad reimbursement or uh, it is reimbursable by the way, in, um, uh, in a VA system. And that could be one of our answers for, for the VA distribution. And um, uh, we've been told that we're on the schedule to be reimbursed in Australia Still waiting for that to happen. And this would be in two states. On the pain shield side, uh, we introduced uh, uh, one of our products that uh, uh, we pulled in 2022, reintroduced it in 2023. The VA and workers comp, uh, which really uh, is propelling most of our growth, the VA, um, we continue to expand. And I, I just uh, put out a a PR this morning that we were awarded uh, the GSA contract. Uh, very important stuff because our partner on the VA side is a uh, service disabled veteran and it, uh, that designation alone um, provides him with a lot of advantages, but the GSA contract to follow up on that provides even more. 
and the upside there is incredible. Uh, we have a next gen product coming out. Uh, the kickoff uh, was delayed a couple of days, but the kickoff for that project is uh, uh, early May. Um, private label, we do have a uh, negotiations going on right now with a private label distributor, and I expect that uh, uh, to develop over about the next month, month and a half. And um, reimbursement coverage, uh, we continue to expand reimbursement coverage uh, in third-party administrators and work comp, which is uh, an area that we are building out our own sales force uh, through 1099s, but that continues to grow and that's uh, been our biggest, biggest growth segment. So some of the upsides, uh, you know, if you, all, if you added it all up, it's greater than uh, $15 million. But on the VA side, I mentioned the GSA contract. Uh, that could be enormous for us. Um, the VA in general is, is growing uh, very rapidly. And it uh, is one of our areas of, of consistent and aggressive growth. On the work comp side, uh, I mentioned the private label our Salesforce expansion, and then we intend to uh, introduce an OTC product uh, at some point during this year. On the Euroshield side, the private label opportunity with Apagifa and then the VA distribution. International, uh, UK reimbursement expansion, and to really capitalize uh, uh, on the UK opportunities that are not have not only presented itself, but the expansion of reimbursement and those discussions are ongoing and, and Australian reimbursement. With that, I'll take questions. Yes. For standard 510K, uh, it would be a, de no well, it would be a de novo submission. Uh, the, Study is in the trial phase right now, and they're enrolling right now. The full study after the trial, the trial is uh, up to 30 patients or until they feel comfortable. And, um, and immediately following that would be the, the full scale study. Yes. Again, uh, yeah, um, first quarter is is normally a little soft, and the fourth quarter is is a a little stronger. Um, primarily just because vacations and uh, um, it just it's been uh, it's been that way from day one. Well, the GSA contract is a little unknown. Um, there's a lot of steps that have to, there, there's a, um, a bid that has to go in following the award of the GSA contract. And I know that he intends to put in a bid of $5 million. And basically what that means, that's a, that's a huge opportunity for us because what that means, the GSA uh, it would not come off of their uh, their local budget. It would come off of the national budget. So they can stock product in the VA hospitals, and it would not come off of their local budget. Apagifa is probably our other big opportunity out of Germany, and that would cover most of Europe. I think I'm out of time. <laughs> Thank you all. I, I appreciate it.